Hey friends, I'm Jill. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. Today I'm going to be showing you, with the help of Nathan, three easy tomato trellising techniques. Now, in the past here, we have done our huge bed that has our zinnias in them, uh, full of large slicer tomatoes, and we have done um, a video called Trellis to Make You Jealous. I will link it down. We actually did this after we learned about it from Josh Satin. Um, he has got a wonderful YouTube channel just on tips and tricks. And when we saw his trellising system, it made a lot of sense to us. And so we have done that in years past, which we will also show you guys today. But I know a lot of people try to figure out what is the best way to trellis tomatoes. And honestly, that depends on if you're growing determinants or indeterminates. It also is going to depend on your price point and what you're wanting to spend, the aesthetics of what you want your garden to look like. And so there are a lot of different options and so today uh, Nathan and I decided to do three different ones uh, one for a determinate variety and then two we're gonna be doing for indeterminate so let's head to the garden and we'll get started so out of all three of these options my personal favorite is gonna be the chel the trellis to make you jealous which is going to be the first one and I think it's because for me it's just really easy um, it's easy to go through and prune your tomatoes it's easy to go through and harvest your tomatoes and honestly it is the easiest one to symbol wouldn't you agree oh yeah yeah because Nathan and I just actually put up the second option we're going to show you and that is one that you will not uh, be able to put up by yourself you can do it with two people three people is probably ideal um, and so this bed right here we have got our uh, indeterminate variety so indeterminate varieties grow you know indeterminately <laughs> um you We've they can some as tall as 10 foot yeah so they get really huge and so obviously you wouldn't want to put some sort of tomato cage on that because they're going to outgrow that tomato cage it's just not really functional and so we try to think of a good system that is going to provide them the most support as they uh, continue to get taller because we do have some that get like nathan said 10 foot tall here so we've actually pre-assembled some and we're going to finish the rest, but you are going to need T-posts. The number of T-posts you will need will be dependent on how large your bed is. So you guys can see here, how how long is this bed, Nate? 16 foot, roughly. 16 foot. I do not have it completely full. I have got four tomato plants here. So we decided to go with two seven foot tall T-posts. That is another thing to be mindful of. You know, the taller the T-post in this instance, the better. You do want to make sure you can still get your T-post drivers on top of it um, to make sure that you can hammer it down. And then we have a piece of conduit. 10-foot. 10-foot conduit. And then you want to show them yep. these clamps here. Yep. These are just, what size is this? One and a quarter inch T, PVC T. Yeah. And so you're going to put that on the top of your T-post. It kind of just slides on there pretty easily and then literally all you're doing is taking your conduit and sliding it through there now obviously you could see if you had a larger uh, longer bed you would need more supports and so essentially the longer the bed you would need uh, you you know if we were doing a longer bed we just put another T post there with another T PVC and what you're going to do which I will link the other video below to reference but you take tomato twine and you tie it around the base of your plant and you will just wrap it around you will go up and tie around the conduit and come back down and essentially as it grows it just grows up to that yep you just if you do a cinch knot you can undo your cinch knot and just keep pulling up yeah yeah it's very very easy so this is what we're doing here in a perfect world <laughs> i would have done all this for cherry tomatoes but if you guys have been hanging around for a while, you know I kind of just beat to my own drum. So there are two large slicers <laughs> and there are two cherry tomatoes in here. So ideally on the next option that we're going to show you, we would have done all of our heavy slicers because it's a bit sturdier. Um, or if we were doing all four slicers here, maybe would have added another T-post if we felt like we needed the support. Uh, this would be really good for cherry tomatoes. Like I had mentioned, we did do this entire bed over here uh, for the last two seasons this way and just added more T-posts. And it did great. Now, if they do get taller, what mine had started to do is it would fold up over and they just start growing down and still put on fruit. Um, 
I plant my tomatoes pretty close, especially if I'm doing this method of trellising because you're able to prune them um, really, really heavily. We didn't have any sun scald. I made sure I left leaves um, around the clusters of fruit themselves, but the bottom I pretty much shaved down bare. I will do extensive videos throughout the summer of pruning, um, how I hard prune, why I hard prune. But this literally will take you, I mean, this took us no time. When you talk about an easy, cheap tre trellis, like depending on the size of your bed, you've got some conduit pipe, which is pretty cheap, some PVC uh, fittings, and a couple T-posts. So I'm going to say this is a really good, cheap option. Uh, the next option we're going to show you can be done for determinate varieties, but I think it really kind of shines if you use it for indeterminate varieties. Um, also, when you think about the cost versus some other cheaper options you could do for a determinate, uh, I don't know that Nathan and I would do this method for a determinate variety. Again, you're gonna need T-posts, seven foot tall or taller is probably gonna be ideal. Typically, when you do this wall style trellising, you're gonna use a cattle panel but we are working with what we have. And so we had this hog panel that's been sitting at the back of our property. We weren't using it, so we grabbed that. And what I try to tell other people too is go to your local farm stand, go to a tractor supply, and you can find sometimes these damaged uh, cattle panels. You guys can see this is kind of warped. A lot of times they'll sell those to you even cheaper, and it doesn't really matter, especially for what we're doing. And so we have our T-posts. We do have T-post clips I would recommend. Um, actually buying these clips instead of like you could do it with a zip tie however those will break down over time and snap off and that would be really unfortunate if it happened to snap off during the peak tomato season don't you agree if you're buying new t-post uh, clips come with them. yeah clips so. come with it if you have t-post laying around anyways i would go ahead and recommend buying these clips because they're really pretty cheap and they're just gonna last um longer so we have got a clip at the bottom a clip at the top now you will see there's quite a bit of space from here to the bottom how much space do you think that is nate so over two foot yeah so there's a little over two foot if we were using a traditional cattle panel we would probably go a foot off the ground maybe 18 inches 12 inches to 18 inches but since this is a shorter one and we knew that these were gonna climb higher because they are an indeterminate variety, we went ahead and made sure that it was up even more. So our tomatoes here are still gonna have to grow quite a bit before they even reach. Um, but when they do, we'll just take a tomato tape and we will just tape it to here. And it works pretty beautifully. Um, honestly, this is a good option. It's a sturdier option to where if you've got a lot of large slicers, uh, this would work really well. I have got one traditional cherry tomato, a medium sized tomato, and then the rest of these are just indeterminate slicer varieties. This is also relatively a pretty cheap option. Cheaper than if you were to have a huge bed, you know, full and you were trying to do tomato cages. Tomato cages, honestly, you'll hear me preach that I don't really love tomato cages, especially for indeterminate varieties. There's no way I would put that on indeterminate because they're going to grow over. More than likely, it's going to end up breaking them. Um, and it's just they just don't serve a really good purpose in my opinion on an indeterminate variety but something like this you can buy a cattle panel depending on where you are i do know that the prices have fluctuated and kind of went up a bit but we can get them around here for 20 bucks and if you don't care if they're warped or have some sort of damage you could potentially even get them cheaper maybe look on some sort of online marketplace or something like that and then you can buy a package of t-posts pretty inexpensively and put this up in a few minutes. This is one of those things that tools make a difference. Nathan and I were using needle node pliers to try to do these clips because we don't really have a need for fencing pliers. So that made it a bit more complicated and took a little bit more time. So we had some sweat equity in it. But overall, the two of us got this done and I do think it's gonna work out really well. So these are already pretty tall. It's not going to take very long before they start reaching. If for some reason we start noticing that they're leaning, I'm just going to go ahead and take some tomato twine and go ahead and tie up to this like I would with the other method. Um, and so that is something you can do too if you're worried about them. You know, this one I kind of just have leaned up 
um, on the t-post here and so you can do that but if you are doing this method and you're worried uh, that your your tomatoes need some sort of additional support just take some tomato twine or some of that green tomato tape and just go ahead and tie up to it and then you can just tie it closer um, as they begin to grow. So with determinate varieties, I would argue that the Florida Weave is probably the best option to do. It is one of those that requires a little research. When I grew um, in the tunnels last year, we had all Grand Marshall determinate varieties in there. Um, I did the Florida Weave. I'm actually probably going to do an in-depth video on that because we do have this spare bed here uh, that we don't have any sort of trellising system because I'm trying to wait until I have all the supplies. Those are something we just didn't have the supplies on hand. Um, you need like wooden stakes or something like that. And so I'll probably just go pick those up. But I did, being resourceful, having things on the farm have a lot of tomato cages from years past that we have kept while I don't use them often they're going to come in really handy for all of my determinate varieties which would be a reason I would tell you to use a tomato cage determinate varieties grow to a determined um, height and so usually there's they're never gonna get bigger than this cage in most cases they're bushier plants you don't really have to prune them so you're not needing to try to get into where this cage is gonna restrict you at all to getting in and pruning to them and so I have found that the tomato cages work pretty well for a determinate variety so usually I do wait until my plants are kind of big like this before we ever put them on. You can see Nathan is just making sure he's obviously not doing any damage to the plant. He shoves it in the ground pretty well. And what I will do eventually, if, if I notice some leaning happening, I'll also just take um, that green produce tape and I'll just tape it to this right here to kind of add some structure and some stability. I don't actually know that I'll need to do that with these, um, but if you do need to, there is that option. It's pretty close together. Get it, girl. <laughs> of the excellent things about the tomato cages, all the different methods that we have described, is that it works really good especially if you're planting vertically vertically it just really allows you to maximize space so in this instance i've got these peas that are going to trellis up that i'm never going to have to harvest from this side of the trellis i'm always going to be walking underneath the trellis harvesting underneath it which means i can have bulkier trellising options and it really not interfere with the other things i'm planting so I've got onions here which will be harvested well before the tomatoes are you know at their peak and the pl the plant is as large as it's going to be. And then down here it's the same option. We can walk down here and I can show you guys with with the beans this cattle panel wall is a bit closer but in years past I've never harvested green beans from this side of the trellis. I'm always walking underneath it and harvesting. So we'll go show that. So with this wall, the tomatoes are going to grow up this side. On the other side, I've got my peppers that aren't going to get just super big. I've got basil. I've got enough space to where I could still plant on this side of my bed and it's not going to interfere. Now the only thing that would cause some interference, as you guys can see, that is pretty close together. The only reason why I'm really not that concerned with it is because one i think it's going to allow for some barrier um you know as my beans start to get bushier sometimes they do go all over the place and i think if they end up hitting the end of this cattle panel it's just going to encourage them to kind of climb naturally where i'm wanting them to go and so like i mentioned every single year the beans just climb up beautifully i'm always coming from the inside of the trellis to harvest anyways Obviously with this trellis system, I don't even think that's going to be a problem. I've got nothing planted here. There's quite a bit of space. And then I do have these beans. And then I've got the onions, like I said, that should be harvested before it's ever um, gonna be a problem. So you may ask, Jill, why do you have three different trellising systems in your garden? Isn't that a bit much? Well, maybe, but I really wanted to do this experiment and see which one I really liked better. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like the, the trellis to make you jealous because I've used that in years past and I really just 
love that trellising technique. Also love that I can put it up and take it down myself. Um, so if you are, you know, by yourself and you are able to physically like use a post hole driver, uh, that is something that you can easily put up and it's definitely the cheaper option out of all of the options. Um, but I had all the materials. I had the materials to do that trellising option. I also had the materials uh, to do the cattle panel trellising option, which I've actually never implemented in my garden before. I have several friends who have used it and said it works really well. And so I thought, well, I've never done it before. We have all the stuff on hand, let's just try it. And then obviously the tomato cages, I really don't love, um, but I think it makes sense for us right now uh, for the determinate varieties. And the Florida Weave is a really good option. I just wanted to be able to show you guys all the different ways you could trellis and encourage you that if you're trying a trellising system and you don't like it and it doesn't work, that you don't have to be married to that. I'm doing three different, you know, trellising options in my garden right now and it's a pretty small garden. And so be encouraged by that. If you don't like something, there's a liberty to play around and see what does work. Uh, the Florida weed, which I didn't show today, but I probably will sometime, um, you know, in the near future, is a really, really good option and it's actually pretty cheap. It is something that you will have to continuously uh, do as your tomatoes grow. So it's not one of those that, you know, you kind of put it on there and it's a bit low maintenance. It's one of those that takes a little bit more thought and um, you are going to be coming through on this first trellising option and untying the slip knot and tightening them but I find that that really doesn't take a whole lot of time. So I hope that this quick little video on these three easy tomato trellising um, options helps you. If maybe you're searching for what you want to do in your garden this year, maybe one of these will resonate with you and you'll be like, oh yeah, that's the one I want to implement. Uh, but thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I'll talk to you soon.